Ladies and gentlemen, we are all fascinated by AI. And the good news for chess fans is that AI is constantly evolving and constantly playing against other AI. In this video, I'm going to show you four recent games that were played in the TSEC Super Final 25. It's the 25th edition of the Super Final where Stockfish emerged to play against Leela. Two of the strongest bots in the world went head to head against each other. And the way they do this is they play certain openings up to a point with both white and black in pairs. And then the rest of the game goes on. I will be telling you about some of these games, telling you when the opening stopped. It's going to be wonderful. One quick thing, if you watch this video here in November 2023, I'm coming to London. November 16th to 22nd, we'll be doing an event at St. Pancras, the train station. Uh, and uh, we will also be doing an event at Conway Hall, which is a pretty, you know, like a medium-sized event venue. We've got more things coming. Information about this is in the description. If you live in London, if you live in England, if you live around there, but you want to fly in or something like that, I will be there. I'll be signing books. I'll be doing uh, some meet and greets, fan events, live guests, the ELO. So, um, yeah, London calling. Gotham X London is going to be a lot of fun. And if you just got this video recommended to you uh, outside of 2023 or... You don't live in London? That's okay. Maybe I will see you in your city one day. And if, you know, if not, then just check, check the book out. Oh, also, signed copies of the book are available right now. And only right now. So if you want to sign copy, you don't live anywhere near any of these events like London or New York. Link is in the description. Okay. Stockfish versus Leela. Uh, two of the strongest bots in the world. Rated 3,673, which is about 3,400 points higher than you are. And 3,642, uh, Titanic ELO, 800 points higher than Magnus Carlsen. So basically, if you combine Magnus and a beginner, you get one of these. So E4, E6, and actually in this very first game, we have a Tarash French defense. This is the French defense, this is the main line, this is the Tarash, uh, 92 A6, and this is a, a very provocative system. Normally, black is playing C5, but h6, a6, bishop e7, they're all kind of ways to play against this flexible move order. Actually, this game, my friends, leaves the opening book very quickly. It leaves the opening book uh, right here. So bishop d3 is the move chosen uh, by white in this game. And um, now the players are basically on their own. Black plays c5 and knight c6. And white plays rook e1 and black castles. So we have a relatively normal position after nine moves. Uh, white has a space advantage here, and obviously a lot of pieces are pointed in this direction, but that's never going to work because black is obviously fighting for that square. Uh, and black is going to try to expand over here. So if you wait a little bit with white, like let's say you play, you know, h3, uh, black is probably going to play b5, and also black is kind of not afraid of playing f5, because if you don't take with white, uh, black will just steamroll you. So black is just going to start attacking, and you're never actually going to get an attack. You just have a very symbolic space advantage. Now here Stockfish plays a very surprising move. Stockfish destabilizes its pawn chain. Not only does it destabilize its pawn chain, it also welcomes knight c5, and maybe even d4. And obviously, if this were to happen, this would be a very big trade, and Stockfish would need to deal with the ramifications of this position, but actually Leela and both Stockfish think that the best way for black to play is to first play queen c7 and wait not to take the pawn on c5 first. I can't really explain this to you, but I think that obviously Leela wants the center pawn. It does not want the pawn on c5. Um, so queen e2 and white is now protecting this. If this pawn can survive, it's going to be very difficult for black to actually make any moves. Now, at this point, uh, bishop c2 is a pure prophylactic move, so knight c5 doesn't actually hit the bishop. Uh, and then black plays a4, which prevents white from expanding on this side. White plays b3 to try to expand on that side. Take, take. And now, black finally takes back on c5. Takes, takes. Okay. So everything is good. Uh, looks like the position is more or less equal. White still has a very, you know, pleasant, tiny uh, advantage here because of probably just the fact that they have more control and this bishop still hasn't developed. You know, if a human is playing white here, they might play bishop f4. They might play bishop e3 looking for a trade, improving their position. But then black will arrive. And then if you try to fight back, black will play knight a5 and things like that. And it's, it's just not particularly pleasant. Um, 
So instead of all of that, Stockfish just decides to win right now. Stockfish at this point spots essentially like a 10 move sequence that wins the game, which Leela probably also saw, but drastically underestimated. And that my friends is the fact that there is a Greek gift sacrifice possible here. Boom. Bishop takes h7. Now, as you see from the eval, this uh, web-based stockfish is not impressed. Bishop takes h7, knight to g5 check, and queen to h5. And normally, that sim symbolizes the end of the game. Because queen h7 is unstoppable. But what happens when the rook moves? Now, normally, you play queen f7. You can't do that. Now, what normally you do here with white is you play queen h7, queen h8, queen here, and then you win. But uh, you can't actually do that because black is safe. So, white looks to be completely winning, but is not winning at all, and... Bishop e3? Yes, Stockfish realizes that it sacrificed a bishop for a pawn, but there is no rush. Incredible stuff here. The foresight of just, I don't have to go anywhere. I now pose a permanent nuisance to you. Look, it's trading off pieces because it has time. Rook to e3, black can play knight takes e5, but then I sacrifice. Your queen has to guard this, so if this, I play queen f7, and it's mate. Oh my god. So rook e3, bishop b7, and white does not rush, does not bring the rook over. White brings the other rook. You lose all of this. There's d4 coming, but you need to overprotect your center. For example, if rook takes a2, now rook f3 is winning because black has to defend the pawn and can't because in comes the queen. It's just the lingering presence of the attack. It's like a headache that won't go away. Look at this. Look at this. Rook g3, now rook h3. Now black's king goes for a run and now stockfish zips back to make sure that pawn is not going to be a problem. Now it plays h4. Then it plays rook f3, putting more pressure. Knight d8, knight h7, the king is being hunted, the king is being cut off. Oh my goodness, look at this. The black king has no legal moves. So now rook to d4, resealing the d-file. Queen g5, the king is running, takes, takes. In comes the queen. My friends, it looks like in this position, black can just escape the checks. But this is still losing. And it's losing for a reason that Stockfish saw all the way back when it played bishop takes h7 half the, half the game ago. This is move 16. And on move 32, it becomes obvious. It's not about checkmate. It's about the fact that after king c8, I would go here, rook e7, and I would push my pawn. That was the idea the whole time. Now my pawn is three squares away from queening. And there is nothing you can do. Queen c2 looks possible. But then I will play queen g5, simultaneously creating threats on the rook and rook c1. This, this computer doesn't even realize how powerful this is. It's actually kind of insane. If king c8, knight f6, rook e7, uh, I think maybe you have to start with queen g5. You start with queen g5 just so you have threats on the rook, and then you will just push this pawn. And, and it, is, it is insane that it saw that. In the game, instead, we have queen c2, but it's the same problem. Knight f6, queen g3, and... Uh, there's constant threats. There's threats down the C-file, there's threats on the king, and there's threats with the H-pawn. And, my friends, Leela has to lose its queen. And that's just not good enough. Not only, look at this, knight d6. Look at this apocalyptic conclusion to this game. I win the queen, and then I guarantee that I get the queen back! But Stockfish saw all of that, it trades the queens, and emerges in an endgame up two pawns. Oh my god, and then it just starts pushing, and this is likely a winning endgame of, of knights and pawns. It, and, and the browser-based stockfish doesn't even realize it, it's because white has two passers, that's why. It's because these two pawns, it doesn't matter that it's only one pawn advantage, you push the king back far enough, and now your king starts walking, you defend your pawns, and that's it. This is not a defendable position, you push, you mate, on b7. Oh my goodness, a French defense with a violent sacrifice that was not intended to deliver a mate at all. I mean, it was, but it also wasn't. What a high-level game. Completely ridiculous stuff here by Stockfish. Look how long it waited and waited and waited. And then finally, it managed to utilize both the pressure on the king and the threat of the H-pawn to win. Ridiculous stuff. Just, I mean... These, these engine games are, are, are just on another level. This was, um, this was a Queen's Gambit declined. It was Bishop G5, kind of a, a traditional line. 
and the players left theory uh quite far in this game it was it was opposite side castling so stockfish decided it was not going to castle king side it decided that it was going to castle uh, well, actually, I guess theoretically didn't decide anything. That was sort of decided earlier. They wanted Stockfish to castle queenside and start an attack and start a fight, right? So watch this. Long castle. Now, this is the first moment the engine is thinking on its own. So instead of playing pawn takes d4, it plays knight takes d4. And it's a very, very confrontational position, right? It is going to be black firing away over here with the pieces, rook c8, a6, b5. And it's going to be white trying to checkmate on that side of the board. And there it is. Look, Leela starting its counterattack with a6b5, of course. And here comes Stockfish with f3. Here comes b4 from Leela. Stockfish has to park its knight and get hit with a rook move. And I mean, it looks like Leela's taking over the game. I mean, if anybody's got any sort of initiative here, it is Leela. Stockfish just plays patient, patient. See, just patiently expanding its pawns, preventing black from getting counterplay in too much of a form. Leela offers a trade of bishops, Stockfish sacrifices a pawn. It's not really a pawn sack because if you do this, knight d6 wins the game. And f4. So, too many threats there. Instead of that knight f6, and now look at this, we're poking. We're poking at Leela. We're playing h5. Just a methodical expansion. Now black fights back, now we slide out of the way. Now look at, the, look at this Stockfish. This Stockfish thinks the position is equal. Queen a5, rook g1, just slowly pressuring taking your time, sliding the queen forward, looking for maybe bishop c2 and g5, queen d8. Now watch this. This is an otherworldly level technique here from Stockfish, who realizes that its king is not quite safe enough and its queen does not have a comfortable enough position. It plays king to a1. And the idea of king to a1 is to then, in a few moves, go here. Because from here, white's chances of attacking are maximized. The queen was not comfortable on any square on this diagonal. You didn't want a queen trade. You didn't want to be attacked, and you didn't want to be attacked. But from B1, the queen is a beacon. It is like a lighthouse. And now, a few moves later, here comes G5, and the attack is breaking through. Takes, takes. Bishop to D7, fighting off white. Now look at the rooks. The rooks are coming. The H pawn, the queen on B1. What an absolutely legendary idea. King A1, queen B1. I've never seen something like this. And now the queen slides along the back rank. You know why? Because it goes to H4 and then to F4 and now the queen has arrived. It can be on B1. It then took a multiple stop itinerary and now it's ready. Now it's ready and here comes H6. H6 is a removal of the black defenses and the pawn goes to H7 as well. Now the king can't move. Now nobody can move. The H file is still available for infiltration. Black plays knight C4 and now the game is over. At this point, the game is officially over, uh, be, and, and, and you don't even see it, right? Like, this, stock, this doesn't even see it. Like, what, what, what do you mean the game is over? Uh, white is now going to very slowly and methodically slide back and sacrifice. So, for example, bishop h4. This pawn cannot be taken with the knight or the king. You can't take it with the king because it's made. You can't take it with the knight because it's the same problem. Bishop takes and then... So, if you can't take the pawn on h7, do you know what the pawn on h7 is actually doing? The pawn on h7 is actually stopping rook to g8. Because black would like to defend this pawn, but they can't. So by playing bishop to h4, black plays rook c8, and now you go here. And now it's over. Once we get all the pawns out of the way of the king, white has 22 points of material barreling forward. Not going to stop that. Not going to stop that. Queen h6 is coming. And one of the fanciest ways that this game could conclude is something like rook to g8 check, just in the future, or rook g1, followed by rook g8, and it's just over. And uh, this is absolutely brutal. Black cannot stop this. So black goes here, sacrificing a knight to create a little bit of counterplay here to get, you know, some pieces back and we go to a little bit of an endgame, but it's just winning. White just has an extra knight. And at Stockfish level, having an extra knight is very good. Stockfish does not manage to lose this game, trades off everything. That knight, how long did that knight stand on the edge of the board? I'll tell you right now, 38 moves. White played without a knight for 38 moves. Look at the knight, look at the knight on A4. Look at it, I'm, I'm pointing at it. Look, it's not moving. King A1, Queen B1, look at this. White did all of that with a knight there that was just standing around, just hanging around. It did nothing. And then on the 53rd move of the game when the dust had cleared, Knight B6. And then the Knight, three moves in a row, Knight F6, E1, Queen. We go to an endgame. Being up a Knight is obviously very good. 
and uh, the game in this at this point uh, ended by adjudication because they said Leela is not going to uh, save this one. That was crazy. I mean, I love the creativity displayed in these opposite, you know, because it looks like Black is fighting back, but the, the most impressive thing here is definitely this. Just realizing that you can slide the queen back with the king in a little bunker and then play rook g1, g5, and, and, and rook g1 again. I, rook h1, g5. I mean, just incredible. I, like, I, I am flabbergasted at how good engine games are and, and, and how easy they make it look. Um, this next one was a Dutch. This was another one of the pairs. And by the way, uh, let me know in the comments if you want to sh me to show you how Leela beats Stockfish 2. Because this is Stockfish beating Leela, but Leela actually in this, in this T-Sec Super Final got as close as it ever did. So, that's, uh, you know. Anyway, D4, E6, a Dutch defense, so a classical variation. And now black plays this approach, bishop b4, and then bishop 2e7. Normally, what black will play is knight f6, which is sort of interchangeable. This move can happen at any point. Uh, but then black will play queen e7 to defend the bishop, okay? Now, the, the bots play this approach of bringing the bishop back and then playing in this way where you wait for white to block their own bishop, and then you play knight e4. And at this point, uh, the bots left the book right here. So this was all the pre-programmed stuff. White is given a very slight advantage, as I think is normal uh, in these uh, computer games. And in the Dutch is not a recommended opening at engine level. At engine level, the, the weakness is created by moving these pawns and potential pressure of the bishops. Actually, computers can exploit the Dutch quite well. Now, a lot of you probably play the Dutch. You go, oh my god, oh my god, at 3700 level, this is not a viable opening. What will I ever do? I'm only 1150. Yeah, shut up. Just shut up. You can play the Dutch until 2800. Okay, when you're 2800, you can reevaluate. Uh, the Dutch is great, just not if you're 3700. Uh, and, and having said that, Stockfish drew. Remember, Stockfish did not lose when it played the Dutch. Leela lost, spoiler. D5, best move. One of the most principled ways to fight, actually, against the Dutch. Takes, knight takes D5. And now we are going to have something here where the knight grabs the bishop, which generally, look at, look at browser-based stockfish. It already thinks the position is equal. It already thinks 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Now, watch as white methodically and slowly improves their position because of this pin. Just that. Just the fact that it is so hard for black to move the c-pawn. Again, most humans here with black... Like, let's say, you know, white plays here. Like, most humans here play queen c7. And then they try to get, you know, this bishop off a little bit. You, you don't want to rush with a move like c5 because you lose that square. So if the knight gets to d5, white is positionally winning. So you got to be patient, right? Queen e8. Like, look at that. You know, look at white just very slowly, just very slowly improving the position. Now it's an engine. So it plays h4. Same side, taking a little bit of space. Not really supposed to push pawns in front of your king unless you're 36, 73. And now a very big transformation is about to occur. Stockfish takes. It takes because even though the bishop is protected, that is an isolated pawn. IQP. Isolated queen's pawn. It's got no neighbors. Now, the way you play against this is you blockade it. You make sure it cannot go forward. And right now, it can't. Black cannot go d4. Black cannot go d4 because let's say knight takes d4, bishop takes g2, king takes g2, bishop takes d4, e takes d4, and then if rook takes d4, apparently this position is lost for black. Even though black gets the pawn back, black now has to live in an apocalyptic world where they can't move the knight, knight e5 is about to win, knight g5 is about to win, rook d7 is coming in at any moment, the eval is only growing and growing. Look, but I got my pawn back. Yeah, but what about knight e7? Yeah, but I, but I got my pawn back. Yeah, but what about f4 and then queen c4 and then rook d7? Yeah, but I got my pawn back. Okay. Knight c7. Queen a4. And look at this. Just rook c1. Just slowly, slowly blocking the isolated pawn. Slow, methodical approach. Playing where you are stronger. Stockfish does not have to attack. It just has to secure control of a certain square. That's all it has to do. It is going to that square, and then it's going to bring the other knight into the center, and then it's going to slide forward to keep an eye on the rook, and then it's going to slide back to threaten to infiltrate on the A-file. Then it's gonna go queen b3, because it's making you bounce around your pieces while poking. 
right? Like a boxer. It's poking at your defenses. It's seeing where something is going to be possible. Bishop f3, queen b3. Looking like everything has been stabilized, but now we're going to go around that way. We're going to go to f4. We're going to go to d5. So Leela takes the knight, but that is an unclogging of the dam because now knight f4. And now pawn to h5. And now, after weakening this side of the board for 20 moves, I've deflected your defenses, and I'm in. And look at this. By the way, Stockfish is down a pawn. Stockfish is down a pawn, but Black has four isolated pawn islands. Four of them. So they will all be hunted down. Bishop f3, rook d7, king g2, rooks. It's just a matter of time. We're going to build up our attack, and that's it. There's the attack. There is no way for Black to survive losing a pawn, but it's very important. White does not trade everything. White does not trade everything. If you trade everything, your chances of victory plummets. If anybody's going to win this game, by the way, it might be black with the B pawn. Okay, not exactly, but because it just takes, takes knight f6, but that's why when, you, when you're trying to win an endgame, when you're trying to win an endgame, trade one pair of rooks. Don't trade both. Don't trade both. The more you trade, the higher the drawing chances. Now, white will still hunt the pawns and still hunt the light squares. King h2 getting out of danger, queen b5, and we've won that pawn. Now, now it's about simplification. Now we can trade. Now we don't mind trading the rooks because queen and bishop is a winning combination. Queen e5 check, queen f5. We've gotten all of our material back, and now it's over. And Stockfish wins with bishop e6, takes, takes, and of course, checkmate to follow. What a game. And I found this game absolutely fascinating from the positional standpoint because Black had certain problems that they were simply not able to overcome. But then this transformation allowed White to just play over here to get the knight to d4, get the knight to c6, get the other knight to d4 while pressuring the position. Look at this. White did not touch an entire side of the board. White just completely, slowly, it's very instructive, very instructive, suffocating style, and that H-pawn was ready. A long time ago, white played H4 on the 18th move. And then a little while later, when the attack was breaking through, 25 moves later, white played H5. So it's just amazing, right? 38 moves, 25 moves. Everything Stockfish does has a long-term purpose. Last game. This one was a, uh, a Queen's Indian defense, Bishop B7, Kaspara variation. This line where black tries to trade very early, so Leela plays like this. And they left book here, actually white moved the king. So this is also very common at engine, in engine games. They are not afraid of moving their king early. Why? Because this bishop is offside. So now white is threatening to either kick it out or trap it. Trap it with something like a3. Computers love to move their kings and then they'll play h4, g4 and like king g2. So they, they, they don't mind, they love this stuff. And um, I think this is the first, uh, com is the first uh, move by the computer and not actually uh, from, uh, not from a uh, opening book. And uh, well, same side castling. A couple of games ago, we saw how it played opposite side castling. Here, same side castling was a positional game. This was a sacrifice. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Rook H... <laughs> King on f1, rook coming up to h3 to potentially go here. And, and it's, it's got no inch. It's, got, it's never going to stop pushing. It's not going to stop pushing because black can't resist with pawns or pieces, right? So black plays bishop f6, and Stockfish does what it does. It's going to always push the pawn. It's going to push the pawn as far as it can. Why? Because if you take, your king's open. So it's not even that I'm going to mate you, although probably I will. It's that your king is always going to be weak. Always. And I'm going to try to get in here as fast as possible. While you're defending yourself, I'm going to get in and do some other damage. If you push the pawn, like what happens in the game, that's going to be a weakness forever. So I'm going to be able to exploit the h7 pawn and the weakness of your king, right? Now, I go back to the center. I don't care that you can hit my queen because I want this position. And now I'm going to play a3 and rook e1. So for example, a3, knight c6. I'm going to play something like rook d1. And then I'm going to slowly prepare my next wave of attack. While this pawn is a thorn, it's not letting black actually survive the middle game, and it's causing black all sorts of endgame problems as well. So black tries to fight back with d5. Takes, takes. Bishop gets out of the way, and now Stockfish has a target. And not only that, it is controlling a square with five pieces. Five pieces control e5. So that is called a backwards pawn. It's called a backwards pawn. 
King G1 sliding out of the way. Now it looks like we've castled. It looks like we castled, but this rook never left the never left the castle. Leela tries to trade the bishops. And now this rook just happily slides back. Does not care. Because here comes knight e5. And rook f5. Now, again, if Stockfish does not manage to win this game by attacking, you know what it's going to do? It's going to go to an endgame. Rooks and knights. It's going to go to it. How, but how is it going to prove an advantage here? Like... How do you know white has any advantage? This pawn is good. It's controlling a lot of squares. Not letting, you know, not letting anything happen. But how are you going to... Okay, rook c1. But how are you going to get rid of the knight that's guarded by the... White can't even... White has no pawns. How are you going to get rid of it? Well, we're going to just slowly take squares away from our opponent. We're going to play g4. Now the rook's got to move. Now we offer a trade. We offer a trade to improve our structure. If black doesn't want to trade, we go king g3. Black can't go too far. Why can't black go too far? Knight takes g6. So if the rooks didn't exist and the king went too far, boom, and boom. That's the problem. Black plays g5. Now knight c6, rook f6. And now perhaps the most impressive moment of the entire game. Instead of taking like this with your rook hanging and giving away that pawn, Stockfish sacrifices the rook. What? Why? Here's why. Because the knight dominates both rooks. The knight also prevents any counterplay. If you go here, I go knight e5. And the pawns are too far advanced. Stockfish calculates 50 moves into the future at this point and realizes black can't do anything. If black plays king e8, I will go g5 or rook g5. I will go rook g5. It doesn't even matter. I'll play rook g5. And if you go to get my, 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 I'll go knight e5 and then I'll play rook g and that's it. Once I win this, my pawns are too far advanced. So Stockfish sees 50 moves into the future and realizes black can't do anything. Black can play rook d7, but if black plays rook d6, I'll just play rook c1. If black plays king e8 and king d7, I'll play knight a7, removing the defender of the c7 pawn, and knight b5, knight here. It, it, there is no way for the rooks to escape the nightmare. No pun intended. Rook d5, g5, rook c1. Look at this. Black is completely hopeless as white just walks forward, seizing control of everything. b5, you cannot get rid of the knight. And now I'm going to come knocking on the door. And when I do, it is all over. I reposition my knight to d7, to f6, king e5, rook g1. Look at the rooks. Absolutely defenseless. Stockfish is just toying with its food. It gets in. Rook g8. And now one of the most disrespectful conclusions to a chess game I have ever seen. Knight h7 check. And Stockfish says, no, I'm not going to take your rook. If I take your rook, I'm not winning. Instead, you take my rook. King f6 forces the rook to move. If takes, then takes and I promote. If rook here, I block. And if king f6, rook to d7, that's mate. You push your own king to his death. King f6 is so brutal. And Leela just plays any move that it can. Rook e7 check, king f7, and uh, it's just a matter of time. Stockfish marches forward, f5, king e6, and this one does get played out until a checkmate, f7, f8, mate. When Stockfish decided to sacrifice its rook over here, it completely knew it was over. It knew there was no way for the king or for the rooks to create any meaningful counterplay. Rook here, rook here would always anchor the knight, and the pawns would dominate, the advanced pawns. And that is why it is so impressive that early in the game it plays h4, because it knows in certain structures, same side castling, with multiple pieces traded, if it can get its pawn deep into its opponent's territory, it's going to potentially cause long-term damage. And it did. It did cause long-term damage. In fact, that pawn is the literal reason that white won the game. These games are otherworldly. Like, 
Incredible, absolutely incredible. Leela does manage to beat Stockfish, I think, more than any bot in the world. We'll see how strong Torch can get. But um, Stockfish is still the undefeated, undisputed. Unless they bring back Alpha Zero. They haven't, but they might, you know. Um, that's all I have for you. If you're in London, check out some of the fan events. I hope to see some of you soon. And I'm coming to Toronto, likely December 7th. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. I will be announcing that stuff uh, here, but also on those platforms. And uh, I will see you all very soon in London. Uh, and um, that's all. Get out of here.